Welcome back TCS viewers, Chris Nichols here from the camera store. Today we're going to be looking at Micro Four Thirds cameras, one in particular, the brand new Panasonic GF7. I'm a big fan of Panasonic G cameras, in fact everybody's always asking me on Twitter, Chris what camera do you use? Because I can borrow whatever I want from the store, I don't keep any big gear around, but I still carry with me a Panasonic GM1. I love the small size, and for my money, I mean Micro Four Thirds, if you're going to have a slightly smaller sensor, why not have a smaller camera as well? It's still a big sensor for the size and it's easy to pocket. I love having the manual controls and it's been really good to me. But now Panasonic's realizing a lot of people are looking for power in small packages. So we're gonna look at the GF7, their brand new introduction in this camera series and it is definitely small. Now when I first saw the GF7, it came into our store, the pre-production model. My first impression was it was a beautiful camera. I actually wanted one. It looked a lot like my GM1. But as I took a closer look at it, I found that the design is almost identical to the GM series. Except for this top plate, you got this little hump here. I'm going to be honest with you, this part is the only thing I don't really like. It kind of looks a little bit cheap on the camera. It houses the flash, but of course there's no flash hot shoe. And it lets us do the selfie screen. Now, these two things right away, selfie screen and lack of hot shoe, really kind of indicate that the GF7 is planted at the more casual user. Somebody who just, you know, wants a simple camera, they don't need to put on big flashes, they're not going to use a lot of different controls. It's definitely for the casual enthusiast. The GF7's got a nice layout. It's actually very similar to the GM1 on the back of the camera. And you've got your back control dial here, and actually not too bad to turn it with these gloves. But one thing I am noticing missing from the GM5, it's sort of bigger brother uh, in, in tier anyways, not in size, is we don't have any back control dial. So I'm gonna be pretty dependent on things like the touch screen, having to use this one control and my quick menu. Oh, I just stepped in something and I'm very glad it's frozen. We got some beautiful light here. I know it doesn't have anything to do with the camera itself, but you can't discount the Micro Four Thirds lens lineup. Still by far the largest selection of any mirrorless camera on the market. The other thing I really like with the G series is you get the 12 to 32. I've got this lens, I've used it quite a bit. It's super compact, but it's actually quite sharp. And you get that 24 mil wide angle, which is nice when you want to push perspective, like these big buildings here. You know, on an optical performance level, the 12 to 32 is going to certainly be uh, as wide as the 16 to 50 that you get on the Sony series, but it's optically better. You get the same wide angle with better image quality. It's not going to beat an 18 to 55 Fuji 2.8 f4, but still, look how small that is. Well, look, the Canon Image Square store here in Calgary. Of course, we love the cameras, but you won't find any mirrorless stuff in Canada. Too bad. I get a really nice parking spot here in Calgary downtown. I'm going to take a picture of my car. Oh yeah, fast. Ooh. I'm going to sell it. You know, it's funny, when I look at the GF7, the button controls on the top, I actually prefer to my GM1. They're actually very slick looking, nice metal bezels. I like the position of the function one button. I probably set that up for ISO like I do on my GM1. On the back of the camera though, things are very similar to the layout of the GM1, but things do have a plasticky kind of feel. They've moved the record button, which is nice. It gets away from your thumb. And the back dial works, but it does have a, a very light plasticky feel to it as well. Still overall, actually, I find the GF7 controls nicer than the GM1. It feels like they're more spacious, even though I've actually got a camera, which is roughly the same size. Now, movie mode on the GF7 is pretty typical. No, we're not going to get any 4K here like we do on things like the LX100. But still, nice image quality. We have full manual control. Panasonic has added some features like peaking and zebra. Seems a little bit hot on this camera because, you know, we don't have mic jack or headphone jack. It just doesn't make sense. And I really don't see a lot of people at this target audience 
really using a lot of high-end cinematic features, but for shooting family stuff, for shooting fun stuff like this, perfect, good quality, no problem at all. So I brought a GM5 here just so we can sort of compare the two cameras together. Size-wise, they're practically the same. We got the same lens on here too. Weight though, I would say the GM5 is slightly heavier due to its more metal construction. On the back layouts, I mean, very, very similar, but the GM5 does have that back dial control that you can push in. Now the GF7 does have the advantage of a selfie screen, I guess. It doesn't really fully rotate or articulate, but the GM5 does have a larger screen and it's a wider aspect ratio. Nice when you're doing video because it doesn't crop in on the top and bottom letterboxing it. Of course, the big difference, we've got a viewfinder here. This is what's really gonna separate these cameras apart. Focusing speed on both is basically the same. Now when we talk about focusing, the GF7 and the GM5, they don't use this defocus determination focusing that the GH4 had. However, I find that they're vastly improved over the older models, including the GM1. These cameras focus incredibly quick, very, very responsive. One of the first things that struck me about the GF7 when I started playing with it. And Panasonic advertised this camera can focus down to minus four EV. I'm gonna to try to find something dark and I'm gonna test that, but I'm pretty confident that you're gonna love the focusing on this camera. You know, again, this, this whole place just kind of reminds me, one of the great things about having a small camera like the GF7, why I like these Panasonic Micro Four Thirds small cameras is you can really just take them anywhere. It's in my jacket pocket, it's super discreet, I can still get good quality. We don't get a lot of bright light in here. We're starting to get into some darker lighting conditions, but I know these cameras can handle it way better than a point and shoot or smartphone. Now the GF7 pushes up to 25,600 ISO. It's not their best low light performing camera, but we're basically getting the exact same sensor that they use in the GX7, the GM5. All right, so of course we can't pass by water droplets on leaves, you just can't. So I'm gonna try and get a shot here. It's kind of an awkward angle though. The GF7 screen is pretty easy to view it at different angles, but I'm getting a lot of light off these buildings and lights behind, so the, the screen's kind of getting a lot of glare here. I'm gonna take a shot. Now one of the things I can do with a selfie screen is I can turn it like this, upside down, get this high angle. Now I gotta turn the camera upside down and use the shutter here with my thumb. Um, Jordan was kind of saying he didn't like this very much, and a lot of cameras it could be an issue, but actually this shutter is nice and easy to push. Works. I have to do some rotation on the computer at home, but really, that was a great way to get an easy shot. All right, so I've got the GF7 set up just out here on the ledge with my gloves, and uh, I'm playing around with the uh, Panasonic Image app, and it's actually a very full-featured app, one of the nicest out there. I can access the quick menu, I can do remote shooting, change ISO, shutter speed controls. It's got a pretty quick uh, update on the screen, but I'm gonna play around with one of the cool modes here, the jump mode. I mean, again, remember, the GF7 is really aimed at users who are out to have fun, do more casual shooting, so I've set my sensitivity pretty high, and I'm gonna go for a jump and let's see what it does. And it totally does get me. So I mean, the jump mode certainly works. It's silly fun. Uh, like even just moving around, it's firing. I can change the sensitivity. It's a neat feature with you and your friends. All right, so while we're talking about fun features, I mean, doing the jump mode does require your smartphone to be hooked up because it uses the accelerometer in your phone itself. But when we flip up the screen like this, it automatically takes us to a selfie menu totally different touchscreen functions. Uh, the first one I'm gonna try is a buddy mode here. So I'm gonna go into buddy mode. It's now gonna look for two people. Levi's my buddy. We'll get him in here. So first thing I noticed is I need a haircut. And second thing, <laughs> it automatically takes a photo of us when it sees the two faces together. Let's take one more. <laughs> so, I mean, a pretty fun feature. I guess it's yeah. uh, automatic, which is uh, better than having to touch a button yourself. Why do the work when the camera can do it for you? Okay, so I've been told over the years shooting TCS TV uh, that I've gained a few pounds by more than a few customers. So luckily for me, in the selfie mode, we got a slimming mode. Check this out. I'm going to hit it. This is the low. And this is the high. Look at that. Instant skinniness. Takes off the pounds. Great for selfies in your bikinis and on the beach. Or if you just want to, uh, you know, not be so self-conscious like myself right now. All right, so we found ourselves a nice dark parquet to test this out here and just see what kind of focusing we're getting. Again, touch screens are great because you can touch wherever you want and focus. And our camera's having no problem focusing in this low light here, not at all. Now the Panasonic can focus down to minus four EV. That's darker than this is here, but 
you know, where this becomes useful and why somebody would need this is, you know, think about shooting any time that you're in a club or a concert or even in a restaurant, just trying to take a picture of your friends. And think about how often your smartphone, you've been touching it, trying to get it to focus, and it just won't do it. The GF7 will do it no problem, and this Micro Four Thirds sensor is going to blow the image quality away compared to any smartphone out there. Well, people want pizza. You know, the GF7's price point is quite interesting because we're just over $700. And uh, you gotta think, the GM1, when I bought it, I got a really good deal on it, but you know, it was still almost $900. And the GM5 is right up there as well. And I know that does really compete with cameras like the RX100 series. I mean, they are pricey cameras as well. But it's good to see that we can get a very portable camera at a fairly decent price with the GF7. It's still very capable. And you, know, you gotta remember that we gotta compete against cameras like the A6000. They are quite a bit larger, but in the grand scheme of things, you can still take them to all the same places that we did today. And of course, the A6000 is gonna give you a bigger chip. So if you wanna maximize your small compactness and still not break the bank, the GF7 could be a good option. I had a lot of fun shooting the Panasonic GF7 today. I mean, it's quick, it's very nice image quality, same as the rest of the Panasonic lineup, and it is now very, very compact, easy to take around. You know, I think there's a lot of need out there for a more affordable G-series camera from Panasonic, and the GF7 does that very well. We do lose some features. I mean, the screen on the back, frankly, wasn't great in bright light, and I don't have an alternative. There's no rotating feature, just the selfie option, and I don't have an external viewfinder. Also, the overall fit and finish is quite plasticky. It means the camera's lightweight, but you can tell, still, Overall, it's a very handsome, very compact little camera. I actually preferred the handling on this to my GM1, but the GM5 does do a better job if you want to do a lot of manual controls, change autofocusing, that kind of thing. Now, I know the selfie screen here right off the bat is going to turn off a lot of serious photographers and shooters, you know, people with no sense of humor, that kind of thing. But frankly, the GF7 is aimed at a more casual crowd, you know, having fun, just having a companion camera with you. And actually what I really liked about the fun features like the buddy mode, the jumping mode, the slimming, that kind of stuff, you know, the color art modes, the scene modes, is they actually worked really well. We've had these things on cameras before and they came across as a gimmick or they just didn't seem like they were fully implemented properly. But here they were easy to set up, easy to use, the Wi-Fi was good and you do get a full featured Wi-Fi package with the Panasonic app. So all in all, I think the Panasonic GF7 did what it set out to do and that's provide the user with an easy going, fun, but full featured experience. Good manual controls, nice and compact, a lot of fun, cool stuff without feeling like an absolute cheap piece of crap. Now guys, we enjoy the GF7, and if you're looking for a nice little compact camera without breaking the bank, take a look at this one. Also, don't forget, check out our other YouTube videos, check us out on Instagram, check us out on Twitter, talk to us anytime. Thanks so much, we'll see you guys soon.